All right, let's take a look at the construction operation application of the bimetal fan disc or disc fan and the limit controls. Um, so what uh, some of you might not necessarily recognize or understand what we mean by a bimetal disc. Um, so I'm gonna put a, um, get an image of a couple of these and um, show them to you. So um, normally this would be something that I could do in class and you'd be seeing them. So I'm sure most all of you have seen these already anyways. So, and uh, specifically, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna insert um, an image and I'm gonna take a picture. So I've got three of these particular limits um, that are shown right here. And uh, there's two of them in particular. One of them, um, they're both uh, considered technically high limits. Um, and then I also have one here that is actually a manual reset, um, 375 VA at 120 volts, and it's a a manual reset control, which I'll be talking a little bit about that one as well. Um, what is unique about that particular bimetal is the fact that it's got a little button on the in the middle of it, which identifies that it is indeed that way. So, exactly um, what goes on in the bimetal is there's going to be a bimetal internally inside of there that would uh, warp and either make or break a set of contacts should there be an issue. So that's primarily what we're referring to with, um, when we talk about a bimetal type of an element, that's uh, primarily what we're looking at. So the image that I am um, showing you right here is one where we're, we're showing a set of electrical contact points, let's call it that. And so, for example, this is contact point, one of them here, there would be a wire going there, there would be a wire going here. These are my two contacts right here and here. So right now it is shown in a normally closed limit control. And obviously, if that control would tend to get, let's call it uh, over temp, the expectation is that the middle would pop up and that would actually open up the contact. So instead of it showing it in the closed position like that, the contact would pop up and it would actually be, it would not allow continuity through there. So um, so then essentially now you're sitting there with an open circuit is what would happen. And that's the expectation and that's a limit control. On the fan control side, we're showing as, we're showing it in the open position. And what we're, what we're waiting on is as this control would become warm enough that it would tend to snap or warp. And all of a sudden, before you know it, in the closed position, that one would indeed, of course, um, it's shown this way, that one would indeed make the contact. So it'd look a little bit like that limit control um, for those points on there. So that's a little bit on, on that type of a device. So you've seen a couple of the you know, the image and we've seen um, some of the little parts and pieces in here um, related to that. So that's kind of the first thing that I would that I would say there. Um, so talking specifically, you know, the bimetal with contacts, that's kind of what we're referring to now in the in the image. And we're going to take a look at this. Um, we'll take a photo. So specifically, the in this particular control, um, you can see where this particular one here is showing um, the two electrical contact points as well as some of the information on the face of that. Now I do want to um, talk a little bit about that. And I want you to note, this one is showing me an L200F-40. Now. Well, we're gonna, what that means, specifically, what does that mean? So let me go back to that. So, and I'll use that as the example. So that one that I just talked about was an L, 
Let me annotate that. So, all right, and so that one was listed as L, in this case, 200 F dash 40 is what it's shown. Now, let's talk about what that means. So what that means is the L tells you it is a limit. Okay, that's the first thing. So the L, that's what the L means. All right. Um, the 200... F represents 200 um, degrees Fahrenheit. That's the other thing. Okay. And, um, and the last thing is, what about the dash 40? What the dash 40 means is that means that it's going to, it is, what it's going to do is it would open... 40, de uh, 40 degrees less than the high event. Now, so we're going to go ahead and hit that up, and let's go ahead and get this tweaked a little bit. All right, 40 degrees less than the high event. All right, now what that simply means is open at 200 degrees, closes at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is the expectation of what we feel should indeed um, go on this particular control. So an L200F-40 simply means L is the limit. The 200F is the 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The dash 40 is means that it's going to open 40 degrees less than the high event setting, which the high event setting is 200 degrees. So, and, uh, so those are the things that you would be looking for when you're kind of evaluating or looking at um, any type of one of these controls. Um, the one that I had shown you is not adjustable, and it is, it's, you're, you're buying it at what the limit is. So when you have... Um, um, a requirement in there, you have to make sure it, it meets the what they had designed this thing to function and work at. So that's typically how that would end up being. Um, I have other limits that are, and a lot of the limits and the temps are going to very much depend upon what the usage is. So this one was showing as a high limit. Um, I've got other limits that would be identified as 135 degrees and with a 40 degree um, correction or a 40 degree um, swing, we'll say, between the high events. So L135-40 would simply mean that it opens at 135 and it closes 40 degrees less than the 135, which would be 95 degrees um, that it would, that it would uh, close back in. So, and again, that's the time that's fairly typical for things to happen that way. When you look at the when you look at other applications for example um, there was one that i talked about earlier that was a a manual reset and um, i'm gonna i'll go ahead and we'll take a look at that one here insert and let's take a look at the, the image on that one and we'll take that so Per our, our discussion on this one here, this one is a still in the bag, um, and this particular one is shown as um, a single pole, you know, open on a rise, um, opens at 250, it's a manual reset. You can see how they're showing it at 375 VA at 120 volts um, as a limit switch. Now this one, you might notice, it just says open 250. The reason why they don't show any other indicators or any other numbers on there is primarily because it is a manual reset type of a control. So on a manual reset control there's there's really no need to there's really no need for us to um, to have a, a to give us the reset temp. So if it's a so uh, the one note that I guess I'll make on there is for 
a manual reset for the manual reset they likely will there we go they will likely just say L like on this particular one that we're dealing with here that one happened to be that was listed as L 250 and that was it All right, so let's continue on with this um, um, lecture on the um, fan controls and the, the bimetal. So the fan controls, so I've previously I just chatted a little bit with you on the, on the fact that we had, um, there are some what I call automatic reset uh, limits, and that was certainly like this one, um, the style that's shown here. That isn't, you know, the one that's listed as L200-40 is a is definitely an auto reset. Now, the one that uh, there was an additional limit that we had looked at that was listed as L250, and it had a little button um, that was a that was kind of that uh, the the little push button style. I think the one thing to uh, probably to look at or to to recognize or understand is that um, you know anything that's a manual reset. The only way it's going to reset is by somebody pushing on it, pushing on that reset button, and um, so that's the main that's the main thing. So I always just I would just put a note um, on there that you know to um, look for the reset um, button. Now, one thing to remember is uh, if you are in the middle of Let's say you're troubleshooting a circuit or you are trying to figure out what's the open circuit. You don't, on a normal job, you do not want to be going around and just pushing all the reset buttons to see if, if that was it. Um, you're going to want to test that circuit or test that, that control out by looking for certain voltages that would be either, you know, you'd, normally you would have the full voltage going to that control and then it would be reduced um, to little to nothing after the control if it is indeed open. If it's of course closed, then you're gonna have full voltage in both sides of that control. So that's, I think, the one area to, to kind of deal with. Um, a lot of the new systems that are, um, you know, if you're dealing with an older, uh, I don't even wanna say just an older boiler, but if you're dealing with a, a boiler circuit, you may have some diagnostics, um, just like a lot of the furnaces will have. But if you're dealing with um, anything that is more conventional and not as fancy and doesn't have all the integrated uh, circuits in them, um, chances are um, you're going to be just doing it's testing circuits out with by looking for voltages in the in the circuits, and uh, and uh, that's kind of the one big thing on there. All right, so let's um, I want to hit up a little bit on the fan control. So on. This next control that we're talking about, we were talking about a fan control, and a fan control is typically going to be normally open, and I wanted to, to make sure everybody understands that. So a fan control is going to be normally open. Now the way that the fan control would be identified on here is if the fan control is, so for example, if I have a fan control, usually the first thing that the list is F as the terminal, and F on that would be identifying a fan control. So for example, if I have F130-20, the way that control would be set up on there is essentially the, the F equals that it's a fan control. Okay, that's one thing. The 130 equals that, or means that basically it's going to close at 130 degrees Fahrenheit is the way that that's going to be set up. And the, let's call it the dash 20 in there, would, would basically mean that it opens um, 20 degrees Fahrenheit less than the high event setting. And the high event. So that's kind of the one thing. So basically in this situation, um, in the example that I gave you, 
that would mean that it would um, it would close it would close at 130 degrees Fahrenheit opens at in this case 110 degrees Fahrenheit um, these are <clears throat> oftentimes you actually uh, on fan controls you quite often can see that uh, the fan controls will be a, be actually many times they can be adjustable so they are thermally adjustable and there's certain types of equipment that will typically have these types of of controls on them um, but uh, again that's the thermal type of controls that they'll typically deal with and that's for certainly anything that's temperature actuated now certainly um, we're going to look at some other systems that will not be temperature actuated that will be more more let's call it more timing and we'll deal with that so um, for that goes so all right so now if there is um, you know obviously i talked about the adjusting screw and adjustment and settings Limits, you're not going to have adjustments. Fan controls, you're going to have adjustments. Um, the differential oftentimes is not adjustable, but you can certainly adjust that. So, um, so that's the one, one thing that I would probably note on there. So limits um, typically uh, not adjustable. Okay. Is fairly typical now let me get this thing sent out there okay and um, like I said that's that's kind of the norm on there a fan control would be adjustable so I'm gonna I'll just put that note on there um, normally adjustable or typically adjustable all right okay that's typical all right so now um, talking about um, the applications and things like that all right I think very much like there's there's probably a very little that I would probably need to expand on a whole heck of a lot with that. One thing I would just point out is certainly location. You're not going to get you're not going to try to get cute with moving the location or changing some of the location. You, you really got to follow the manufacturer. Again, it's all about liability. You do not want to be trying to um, trying to put some really non OEM um, that's not the same. Uh, type of a control in there the contact ratings you know this again is one of these where um, they're going to be rated by voltage they're going to be rated by current so um, normally that generally doesn't become an issue for the most part you know if you think about that one control that we had uh, that we we're looking at earlier that one control um, as an example had 375 VA at 120 volts so that's roughly um, let's call it about three amps at really at 120 volts now and that's a for a limit circuit now if it were a 24 volt circuit then the amperage rating would be a little bit higher so the uh, as a rule so if it's good at 120 you know it's going to be good at at essentially the the 24 volt circuit and there again you just have to kind of um, be aware that there are some limitations, but rarely does that become an issue, and it shouldn't become an issue. So it's just one of those where you just want to be aware of it, um, typically how that would end up being. So, all right. So looking further at some of the, the wiring and typical circuits on there. So the we're going to be looking at some of the wiring diagrams and taking a look at some of these um, areas and different furnaces and rooftops and whatnot and typically what happens is in in most cases uh, on a, it says on they're usually separate devices and circuits so it's that means that you're going to probably have multiple limits so I think that would be the one um, that I would probably um, point out is that I would say you know normally um, normally you're going to have, you're really going to have multiple, um, limits. I'm going to say that are, that are kind of string together. Now, what I mean by that is, um, that they're string together is that they might be in series in a circuit. Um, they're not going to be 
act. You know, they're they're going to be they'll have their own responsibility, their own separate circuit is typical. Now, fan circuits, obviously, because their voltage, um, fan circuits are always going to be kind of by themselves simply because they're always high voltage as a general rule. Very rarely do you see them where they're not high voltage, um, and I and I say very rarely. On a lot of the rooftop circuits, they quite often, um, they will, they may be low voltage, um, and it's only because that they're gonna use a relay due to the ampacity or the amperage of the motors that you're pulling or that you're trying to use. So, um, so, and I, so I would just put a note on there, um, is, you know, rooftop units um, can, uh, can have low voltage circuits, you know. So there's there's different ways for uh, fan circuits, but there again, you have to recognize that what they're doing is they're actually they're um, on a rooftop unit. They're actually going to be looking at um, energizing a relay or a contactor or something like that is how they're normally doing that. So um, temperated wire. All right. So let's take a look at this. Using temp rated wire. Now, what exactly what we mean by that? What we mean by that is on certain circuits, what you got to be careful with is um, there may be some of the there's times where you may have where you may require um, you know some high temp wire. You may require a high temp wire. Now if they're requiring that high temp wire, and, and I'll give you an example. Now, obviously in most residential type furnaces, in most commercial rooftops, I would say, um, I would say the standard wire would probably, will likely be actually sufficient. In, um, I'm gonna put on there especially for the, um, we'll run especially on uh, kitchen appliances. Now, in kitchen appliances, and I might say, well, you know, that's not a furnace. Well, on a on kitchen of kitchen appliances is a is an area of the of our business world that um, some of you guys may end up working there in some of those places. Now, a uh, if if you're working on let's say a fryer. Or you're working on any type of a of a stove or an oven, you're gonna find that they may have some limits on there, or some fan controls that are controlling, let's say, convection fans, anything like that. You're gonna find that that it's not just basic standard wire. It is generally high temp wire that'll usually have a very high temp coating on them to allow it to handle that high heat that you're typically dealing with. Um, in a, um, I would say. Um, I'm, I'm just going to put a note on here that standard temp wire um, is often okay with with uh, most appliances with most um, furnaces but there again you have to really pay attention to that um, and it's one of those where if you when you start finding that your wire all the insulation on the wires are starting to kind of crack and burn off um, that's kind of telling you something so you have to kind of recognize that as that's kind of the issue on there so um, as far as you know let's talk a little bit about some of the the troubleshooting and so on and so forth so uh, you know because we're talking limits mostly and as well as some fan controls but you know what's the most likely cause of a high limit failure and what's What's doing that? Well, the first thing that um, there's ways, there's different ways to look at a failure. Okay, so you know what's the cause of the failure? If it if it fails um, open, if let's say if it fails open, you know, and is a um, let's call it a an auto reset. Usually that will actually mean that you've got a, a cycle rate problem um, that's going on. It's been, so that, that means that your, um, 
you know, if you have a normally closed, if you have a normally closed limit as an example, this is probably the easiest way to look at. It. You got a normally closed limit, and you're sitting there, and it's opening and closing, and opening and closing. It's sitting there going on and off all the time, because of some other issue that's causing that. It's it's probably going to fail open. Now, is that the problem of the of the limit, or is that the problem of the usage? Is it the problem of the root cause? And I certainly wouldn't identify that as being the root cause. Is oh, we you know we got a bad limit, without looking at closely at what's at what's going on in there. So that's kind of the one one area that I would that I would say is probably reasonable um, to look at. If um, I would say the most um, common cause I would say is definitely I would say is definitely going to be um, due to an airflow problem and there again you could we could look back on you know the first page that we talked a little bit about what are you know what are some causes of a high limit to open up you know it could be a lower flow problem can be caused by, you know, is it filters? Is it um, fan speed? Is it duct restrictions? There are, you know, there are numerous, numerous issues that potentially could create that problem. It could be, you know, loose belts um, commercially for you commercial guys, you know, it could be a loose belt. It could be, you know, um, just, you know, incorrect adjustments. You know, there's a number of things that there can be. Again, um, not here to tell you every little piece that's going to do it, but those are the main things that are that kind of go on in there. So the question that you want to kind of you know be looking at is is the problem, you know, is it one that's not closing again? And whoops, wrong one here. Um, is the problem you know, if, if you've got a limit and it's not closing, um, if that normally closed limit is not doing its thing, that's kind of one thing that we want to look at. So the, um, if it's an auto reset that, you know, it's not closing, then you got to look at the cycle rate on there to some extent. So. Whoops. All right. So. Um, let's go and take a look at a couple more things. All right, so, all right, I think we've covered enough of those limits for the moment on there. And I, I think, you know, the, the big thing that I would point out is that there again, when a limit opens up, and I'll have a, I'm going to go through a little sheet a little bit later on, and we'll go through more on the on the limit side of things. But uh, again, um, generally, you know, limits open up due to overheating situations of something, and the root cause is can be numerous, and you have to really dive into that. So I'll have a little bit of a cheat sheet at the end 